Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the last day of the Niagara Children's Water Festival. My name is Carrie Royer, and I work for the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority. The NPCA owns and manages 41 conservation areas in Niagara. Some of you may have visited Falls Falls or St. John's or been camping to Long Beach or Chippewa Creek Conservation Area with your family. My job at the NPCA is to work with local community groups, schools, and other partners to improve our watershed. Today, we're going to learn about the Yellowfish Road Program. This program is run across Canada by an organization called Trout Unlimited. Here in Niagara, the, the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority is the local coordinator of that program. Earlier, I used the word watershed. Does anyone know what that is? <clears throat> a simple way to think about this is that a shed is used to store tools and equipment. A watershed is to store water. A watershed is a landscape or an area of land where the water drains when it rains, over which water drains when it rains. The water runs over the landscape based on topography or geography. So the high areas and the low areas helps the water drain in certain places. The shape and geography of the area allows the water to enter the low spots. And these are usually creeks, streams, rivers, and wetlands and lakes. Our watershed in Niagara drains to Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, and the Welland River. My next question is, does anybody know what a storm drain is? A storm drain is usually found on the side of the road by a curb and is generally a metal grate that covers a hole in the side of the road. A storm drain is where the water grows when it lands on the road in a city. Our roads are designed in a way that makes the water run slowly off of them to avoid flooding and make it safer for drivers. But where does the water go? Storm drains help get the water off the road quickly, but the water goes down into an underground pipe and has to go somewhere. You may have learned from other presenters at the water festival that when the water leaves our homes, when we drain the tub, flush the toilet, take a shower, it goes into an underground pipe that leads to a wastewater treatment plant where the water is cleaned and filtered before it is put back into a local water body. Many people think it's the same thing for storm drains, but in fact, most storm pipes lead directly into local streams, water courses, lakes, or the Welland Canal. The water is not treated or cleaned because the only water that's supposed to go down a storm drain is rainwater, and there's no problem with that entering a, a, a creek or a stream. Unfortunately, when the water is moving over the landscape, over the roads and the grass and the land around it, it tends to pick up pollutants from humans and put those pollutants into the storm drain along with the water. Can you think of any types of pollution that would be on a road from the cars driving or things that we put on the road at certain times of the year to help melt the snow and the ice? Those things may enter into the storm drain as well. Some people don't know that storm drains lead directly to local water bodies and even purposely pour household chemicals down the storm drains to get rid of them like used car oil, paint, or chlorinated pool water. Pollution from our lawns and roads can make fish and other creatures that live in the creek sick or even kill them. For those of you that live in the country, you may not see storm drains so often. In rural areas, you likely have roadside swales or ditches. These swales and ditches do the same thing. They drain the water off the roads and they bring it into a local water body. We are going to use this demonstration table behind me that looks like storm drains to think about different types of pollutants that can enter the storm drain. I'm just gonna back up here. Okay. So on this table, I have five storm drains and my road is called a yellowfish road. Have a look at this sign on the front of my table. There's a picture of a storm drain and then a yellowfish painted beside it. The Yellowfish Road Program allows community groups, schools, and families to paint yellowfish next to storm drains to remind people that the water that goes down these storm drains ends up in local creeks and water bodies and to try and remind people to dispose of their waste properly. <clears throat> I know we can't all be together at the water festival, but I'm hoping that you can do something for me from home. When I start pouring pollutants down the storm drains, I want you to say, stop, it's a yellowfish road. If you're sharing space with other people in your home, it's okay to just whisper it. You don't have to yell. So I'm going to pretend to be different people putting pollution down the storm drains. I would never actually do this. 
I just finished changing the oil in my car. It was really dirty. I can't put this in the garbage. It's liquid. I don't want to drive somewhere to drop it off. It's not a lot of oil. I'm just going to pour it down the storm drain. What's the big harm? Did you tell me to stop? You definitely should have. Used oil doesn't look like this oil that I used. This was just uh, vegetable oil that hasn't been used. Used car oil is usually black or really dark brown. There's toxins in it that can be really harmful to fish and other insects that live in the water. Used oil should be put into a safe container and brought to a hazardous waste depot where it can be disposed of for free and properly. Storm drain number two. I was walking back from the store in my neighborhood where I bought some snacks. There weren't any garbage cans around. And even though I have all these pockets on my overalls, I didn't really feel like bringing it home with me. So I'm just gonna throw it on the road on my way home. I hope you told me to stop for that one too. Garbage is often found near storm drains and it has multiple problems. One reason that it's a problem is it can cover the grate and not allow the water to get in because the garbage is clogging up all the holes. The other issue is that when the garbage actually makes its way into the grate, it's gonna end up in that water body, just like the oil. Do you think the fish really wanna live with your garbage? Do you think that you could have made a better choice? Putting garbage in your backpack or your pockets and bringing it home with you is the best thing to do with litter. If you're driving in a car, same thing. Keep it in your car until you get home and get rid of your garbage once you get there. My car was really dirty today. I filled up a bucket with soapy water and washed it in my driveway. The soapy water runs down my driveway away from my house and goes down the storm drain. My car is nice and clean now and I have this leftover bucket of soapy water. So I'm just gonna pour the rest of it down the storm drain along with the other water. Did you tell me to stop that time? I really should have listened to you. The soapy water ran down my driveway and went into the storm drain. And now I can see bubbles floating in the creek down the road from my house. Soapy water, although it's mostly made up of water, can be really detrimental to local wildlife. Fish don't really like having a bubble bath. You know when you catch a fish and they have that slimy mucus layer on them? That's actually a protective layer that stops chemicals and pollutants from entering their skin. Soapy water can strip away that mucus layer on the fish and can even kill fish eggs that are in the creek. Washing your car at a proper car wash means that the water will go down the, the storm drain or sorry, not down the storm drain. The water will go down a, a regular drain like the one in your house. It will go to the wastewater treatment plant and get cleaned before it gets put back in the water. If you do wanna wash your car at home, lots of people do, um, the best place to wash your car at home is actually on the grass. That way the water's getting filtered through the grass and the soil before it gets into the local water bodies. When you're done washing your car, you should always dump your bucket down the, the drains in your home, either in a tub or, or a, a sink or any other drain in your home. And then that way you know that that water is gonna get properly treated. My next storm drain, sorry, I'm realizing I'm in the shade a bit here. I hope you can still hear me okay. There was all this dirt and sand on my driveway. So I swept it all up and I needed somewhere to put it. There's a perfectly good storm drain nearby. So I just dumped my dustpan down the storm drain. Soil and dirt comes from nature. What's the, what's the harm in that? I hope you still told me to stop that time. You were right. I could have made a better choice. Dirt and sand are added, when, our, when dirt and sand are added to a creek, it causes something called turbidity. Turbidity is a big word, but it really just means the cloudiness or the dirtiness of the water. Cloudiness and dirtiness means the water, the soil is suspended in the water and that can get trapped in the gills of fish when they're breathing. It can also cover up fish eggs and other living creatures that are small living underwater. Instead of emptying my dustpan into the storm drain, the better choice that I could have made was to either throw the dirt and soil onto my lawn 
put it in a garbage can or put it in a compost bin or even add it to my garden. The last drain that I have is this one. I had to fertilize my lawn and garden so that flowers and vegetables will grow better and my lawn would be nice and green. It also keeps away the weeds. It's a good thing that it's going to rain today because I, when I put it on, it'll help the plants grow. When it rains, all those pesticides and fertilizers start draining off my yard and end up down the road in the storm drain. If you told me to stop this time, you were correct. Fertilizers and pesticides are added to lawns and garden from washing to the storm drains and ditches when it rains. The fertilizers have nutrients or plant food that will cause algae in the creek to bloom. Algae means that there's less oxygen available for the fish and other living creatures that are in the stream. Instead of using fertilizers on our lawns, we can pull weeds by hand. Adding soil containing compost is good for the garden and leaving leaf clippings on your grass when you cut the grass um, by, by not bagging the, the lawn clippings is another way to add nutrients back to your lawn in a more natural way. If you are gonna use pesticides or fertilizer, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on the weather to make sure that it's not gonna rain and also to follow the label instructions as, as well as possible. Thank you so much for helping me for today and for taking the time to learn something new. If you are interested in learning more about the Yellowfish Road Program and maybe how your school or your family can be involved, I encourage you to look up the Yellowfish Road Program on the NPCA's website. Always remember that what goes down the storm drains ends up in the local water body. So whatever you're putting in there, think about if you would add that to a fish tank or to the stream directly. I'm going to come and take some questions now, which I need to get closer to my computer for. Um, I'm happy to take any questions that might come up. And I also encourage you to submit your questions to the water festival email, um, water festival, at niagararegion.ca. So my first question is for Mrs. Reynolds grade four class. Are there aquatic species in Niagara that are more vulnerable to pollutants than others? That is an excellent question for Mrs. Reynolds class. There are certainly some species that are much more sensitive to pollution than others. One example is trout fish. Trout are very sensitive to pollutants and will only live in water that is of highest quality. And the fact that there are certain species that are more sensitive or vulnerable to pollution actually helps us monitor water quality. At the NPCA, we collect benthic macroinvertebrates. They're tiny little water bugs that live in the water. And from the diversity and the different kinds of species that we find, we can tell a little bit about the quality of the water. So we combine that biological information, the, the living species that are in the creek with the chemical information when we take water samples to give us a good picture about water quality in Niagara. That's an excellent question. Are the car wash soaps that say environmentally friendly actually environmentally friendly enough to go down the drain? I think that is, sorry, that was from uh, Mrs. DeWard's class. That is a really difficult question to answer um, for multiple reasons. Every company is different. So what they put into their soaps and the ingredients and everything like that would be, would be different. I would encourage you to read the label, see what's in there and just determine if you think that that is a good uh, a good choice. If they say environmentally friendly, we all hope that that is actually true. Um, so just always read the label. Mr. McDonald's class, why is it called Yellowfish Road? Um, the, <laughs> the Yellowfish Road program was developed by Trout Unlimited Canada. Um, I think the yellowfish is just yellow because it is bright and easy to see when it's painted on storm drains. So it's highly visible. Um, the other reason I think is just because of the little, the, the connection with the yellow brick road, um, something that people recognize. So I think those are the two main reasons is the, the connection with the yellow brick road and also the, the bright color of, of yellow. It's easy to see on the side of the road. Mrs. Reynolds class, are there pollutants that are worse than others? Uh, certainly there are pollutants that are worse than others. Um, that is the reason why we have um, MSDS sheets, material safety, um, sheets so that we know what chemicals are dangerous and how to handle them. So always, if you're using any kind of pesticide or fertilizer, see if you can look up online and see if you can find that material safety data sheet so that you know what the dangers are, how to handle it properly. It's always, always encouraged, no matter if it's something simple at home 
or something that you're using for work or otherwise. Can bleach affect fish or kill them from William? Thank you, William. That is certainly a good question. And yes, uh, bleach would certainly uh, affect the fish or kill them depending on the dosage. So bleach can be in very small amounts, um, like what you would have in, in drinking water or pool water, um, or it could be in larger amounts. If somebody was to just pour bleach down the storm drain, that would certainly be very detrimental to the, the uh, aquatic life. I have some birds around me. I hope they're not making too much noise. Mrs. Brown's clouds, what can I do to help the fish? So just again, always informing yourself as best as possible, helping the fish in ways by um, looking at what's going down the storm drains in your own neighborhood, cleaning up litter that you find, um, seeing where those storm drains are and thinking about what things are entering into the, the storm drain in your neighborhood is certainly one way to help fish. And then, um, just learning about their habitat and what they need to live is, is another way. And then, you know, seeing how you can play a role in that just depends on where you live and what your property looks like. This next question from Mrs. Jones class, can I paint a yellow fish in my neighborhood? Um, yes, you can paint a yellow fish. So the conservation authority has an agreement with all the local municipalities that we have permission for this through this program to paint yellow fish. So we would just ask that you, um, contact us to get a painting kit so that the paint kits um, so that the it's the proper paint and that the proper stencil is used to paint the words rainwater only and the fish next to the storm drains so that it's all sort of consistent so that it's more recognizable and along with the painting we also have door hangers that you use to go around your neighborhood and hang them on people's doors to inform them about the program because it's not always intuitive to just see the yellow fish next to a storm drain and say oh I shouldn't Put chemicals down the storm drain what does that fish mean um so it's just something that uh it kind of goes along with the information that you share with your your neighbors when you're painting it in your neighborhood and um some some municipalities i've seen some in my municipality in welland some storm drains actually have a fish in the grate like right in the metal that there's a, the shape of a fish in there so that's kind of an interesting initiative that some municipalities are doing as well my next question is from mrs world's grade three class what about people who drain their pools into the street? Does the chlorine harm the water bodies? So just like when you're washing your car, it's always best if you're draining your pool to do it, to run it over grass or lawn. That way as much water as possible is infiltrating into the ground instead of running right down the street. Certainly if there was a large amount of chlorinated pool water getting into a local stream, you can imagine you wouldn't want to add something like that to a fish tank because it could be harmful to your fish. So just running as much of it as possible over grass or lawn or something that would help filter it a little bit rather than just putting it right out to the road into a storm drain is, is the best choice. Why did they build storm drains the way they did if it was going to affect the fish? Um, <laughs> well, that is, there are some storm drains that were built differently. So we have in some areas uh, connected storm drains where the water does go to a water treatment plant except in certain times of the year when there's a really big storm event, then it runs into um, the local water bodies. And those have caused their own set of issues um, in some areas. The storm drains were, I think, an, you know, they're made to, they're supposed to only be collecting rainwater. So that was the reason that they were designed that way to keep the water off the road. Um, and there are some things that are done, like there's sometimes grates at the end of them um, to stop getting, like to get some of that litter out. Um, and it's just a matter of, I guess, educating the public as to what should be going down the storm drain. If it's only rainwater going down the storm drain, it's not really a problem. It's when it's um, other things being added by humans. So just really educating the, everybody on what's important or what can and can't go down the storm drains. Um, I think we are out of time. I thank everybody so much for your questions. If you have any more, please send them along. I'd be happy to try and answer them. Enjoy this beautiful sunshine that we're having today. I encourage everybody to get outside and enjoy this lovely weather that we're finally getting and have a wonderful weekend. Take care.